Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you may be. Uh, CC here, Chris, from New York, uh, Westchester County. You see, C, even CC is seasick of that damned intro, considering that exasperated sigh. Look, man, you don't have to do it. No one likes it, not even you, apparently, and it does literally nothing but make you come off as a little bit pretentious and mostly an old. Just go with It's Your Boy CC. Seriously, as overused as that is, anything is better than this. It's uh, 10-20, 2023. Um, and here I am, got drenched once again on a Friday. Are you trying to tell us that you are all wet there, eh, crisps? I f***ing knew it. Chris Iced is just so horny for the flat earth that he cannot control himself. But dude... Just because thinking the Earth is a big hubcap is the only way that you can ahem, finish doesn't make it true. The only way I can keep my sausage hostage successfully is to imagine I'm a talented YouTuber who makes good videos. We all know that shit isn't true. Uh, every weekend for the last eight fucking weeks, it's been raining. That's right. That's right. And one of the storms was an extra bonus because the weatherman didn't even know. <laughs> the weatherman didn't know one of the storms? Wow, that's never happened before. And really? Just one of them. So most of them were properly predicted. Damn. Now, that actually feels like something to be astonished about. Back in my day, if the predictions of the weather forecast were even half right, it was considered a really good week for them. Looks like that shit's getting better. That's kind of awesome. We just got nine inches of rain down in Brooklyn, seven where I live, and, 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 and other areas got six, five inches of rain. No, no warning, nothing. So many inches. Seriously, I still think that this is a sex thing. But yeah, weather forecasting is not what we would call an exact science. It's a forecast, as in prediction. Not a fact about reality, because these things have a lot of variables. The fact that we do have the ability to predict it at all is basically fucking witchcraft. But no, as all who mans do, the second they have one negative experience with something that they don't understand, the whole thing must be a massive piece of shit and their life is ruined. Nothing. Now if that was snow, one inch of rain equals, yes, a foot of snow. I don't think I'd ever actually heard that, and would you look at that, it's generally accurate. Damn, it's a weird feeling having learned something accurate from CC. It's like finding out that one guy who you hate agrees with some really specific thing with you. It makes you start questioning reality. Do I even like that show or game or thing anymore? If that guy likes it and everything he says is just the worst, maybe I don't like it. What is happening to me? So that would have been a world record in, in Brooklyn, right? Nine feet of snow? A world record in Brooklyn. I don't think you know what the world is, Chris, which frankly would explain a lot. No, it would just be a record, if that even is a record, because as much as the general rule is indeed that one inch is about 12 inches of snow, that's in no way a universal. Some snow is more dense, some is way more airy, so who knows? In fact, fun fact, snow can be compacted to ice, and ice is like 90% of the mass of water, so technically, five inches of rain could be less than that of snow, at least technically. Anyway, it's not important, but as always with Chris, everything he says is actually way more complicated than he thinks it is. No wonder he's a flat earther. Oh, shit! <laughs> yeah, thanks, man. I thought it was pretty funny, too. Now, it's different if it's a wet snow or if it's a fluffy snow, but that's usually around what they use. Anyway, look... Oh, so he does know that and is just dismissing it because that wouldn't line up with how he thinks the world works and or the point he is trying to make. Okay, I mean, paying lip service to a fact is fine, I guess. It is a great way to say something stupid and then say, no, no, I actually know the non-stupid version of it, so that means I'm not actually an idiot. Today's a Friday, and I, I want to give you something to think about here, and I got, I got some things for you to think about. Thinking about things? That sounds like what them stupid smart science guys do when they prove things with actual evidence and research. This is Flat Earth Town, where thinking is the highest of crimes, punishable by being sent hundreds of stupid fucking memes that make the authors of them show themselves to be as or even way dumber than we already knew that they catastrophically were. Uh, just just in case if I'm able to put the video together over the weekend, okay?
you got to wonder how many IQ points mankind's value goes up every time Chris Chris can't or forgets or just cannot be asked to upload a new smart guy video where he doesn't understand something super hard at us. I'm assuming it's by at least a few hundred thousand million points. I want you to think about something. When I was a kid, uh, we grew up with video games, uh, just like any childhood did have. Goodness, your grammar is terrible. But whatever. Vimeo, James. Fucking awesome. Let's talk about that instead of whatever dumbass point you are almost certainly going to make that completely ruins any notion that you are some kind of smart person with the ability to actually do critical thinking. Or, you know, any kind of thinking, really. But who am I kidding? That's not what any of us are here for. Around my generation. Um, I used to like Choplifter. Now, that was for the Apple, Apple computer, I believe. Apple II. I think I had the 2 Plus back then and then I had the two Wii. Okay, so we are getting an idea of how old you is, because the system was made in like the late 70s, early 80s. So if you were a kid back then, that means you are approximately old. Hey man, I'm not talking shit on him. I'm younger than he is and I'm definitely starting to get there, so to speak. And it sucks. At least we now know that the hair is from age and not because he's actually a 20-year-old that just saw something so shocking it caused his hair to go white. Like evidence that the Earth is actually a fucking globe. But anyway, my point is it was always impossible to... to Get that chopper to, to land, you, you know, on the ground. I don't know if you remember that game. God, I hope that's not actually your point, because I don't know what the f*** that has to do with we live on am big panache. Maybe it's because, well, if Earth am spinny glob, why am no spinny glob in old helicopter gam? They must have noted that it am the flat, and certainly nothing to do with both the technical limitations of the hardware and, of course, the fact that it would be completely unnecessary to do that anyway. Um, and then we had Flight Simulator, which just sucked. Okay, because I didn't have the right keyboard. I didn't have the right uh, joystick for it. Ah, of course. Thing bad, because I don't have the ability to use or understand it properly. I mean, it's kind of a flurf mantra. So many things are bad because they don't understand how it works or how to use it or don't have the tools required to make it good. And I don't just mean equipment. I mean brains. So I couldn't even get the fucking thing off the tarmat anyway, so I just put that game aside. You see, I remember playing the shit out of various flight sims, and we didn't have a decent flight stick either. But that didn't matter, because it worked fine on a keyboard, so I'm pretty sure it was like everything in your life a skill issue. Because I didn't have the money to go out, I mean, I had 10, 11, 12 years old. I didn't have any money to go out and buy a joystick for the fucking thing. And I'm sure that if you had acquired the money, you would have spent it on fucking magic beans or some other nonsensical shit anyway. Kaka, I thought I sent you out to purchase a Thrustmaster XT 16,000M and you returned with the fucking Resident Evil chainsaw controller. It's not even for the right system, you goddamn pleb. Anyway, so my point is, on every flight simulator, Okay, and this is including the one that they have inside of the airports when you're trying to get your pilot's license. First off, I still doubt that you have ever had an actual point in your life, but uh, is that where they do simulations for pilot licenses? Just in airports? I mean, I'm sure that they exist in some airports somewhere, but you paint a picture of just wandering into, I don't know, JFK International, hopping into one of the banks of aviation license machines, pulling a few sky-based handbrake turns, and then saving yourself a few bucks on the next flight, because you don't need no stinking pilots. Although, if I were a betting boy, what he's actually talking about is those airplane rides for children. Seems more on his ability level. It's funny, because they don't have the Earth moving. Why is that? <sighs> Oof, Chris, mate, I am 100% sure you have had this explained to you many times. And, you know, I'm gonna do it again, but this time I really, really want you to actually listen. It's because it doesn't have to. From your frame of reference, the Earth might as well 
not be spinning. Now I could use the classic on a truck or on a plane thing, but I actually saw something today that kind of shows it the other way around. It's this dinosaur on a trampoline. When the fabric of the surface is pulled down extremely quickly, it's as if the dinosaur is just floating there because it doesn't immediately catch up with the material. And I think this shows rather nicely that if the earth stops spinning, that is when you would notice the change, not the other way around as you seem to think of it. Because that is a uh, precision land that you're going to have to do. Yeah, and if they wanted it to be accurate, they wouldn't fucking have it spinning, you freaking idiot. It's like you think you have spotted something that everyone on Earth has missed. But what if? What if you haven't done that and have instead simply not understood something? Sometimes, when everyone around you seems to be a bunch of massive idiots, it's you. You're the idiot. Unless, of course, you're Chris when... That's always the case, not just sometimes. Don't you think one would be practicing that thing over and over and over again? Because it would be constantly different. The wind always changes everywhere. Yeah, of course the wind changes it, but that's something that we know does have an effect. But again, we aren't making the ground spin or move away or whatever the fuck you think should happen on a glob. Because it doesn't do that, and we do not expect it to. And we know why it doesn't. You not being able to accept such explanations, or that what you think happens just isn't the case, is a you problem. Mostly in your brain doesn't work kind of way. And then you've got the spin going at a, at a thousand miles per hour. Where does it begin? Where, do you have to be out in fucking space in order to see the Earth spin? Right, aside from the fact that depending on what kind of orbit you're in, you might not be able to see it at all. But assuming you were sat there looking at it from Earth in a stationary position, well, relative to the Earth, so you would still, of course, be orbiting the Sun. If you watched the Earth from that kind of position, you would barely be able to perceive any rotation at all. Because as much as the Earth spins at about a thousand miles an hour, that's only 15 degrees of its circumference every single hour. That's one degree every four minutes. That's nothing. That would appear basically entirely stock still if that was how fast you were spinning on say a merry-go-round. And you expect to see and especially feel that shit? Get out of here you great goof. Where? Where does it fucking spin? How many times do we have to fucking wake up people and tell them to look at something as obvious as that? Whoa, all right, calm down, getting a little emotional there, buddy. I know, I know. You think that everyone else is an idiot, but you know, look in a mirror. Because intuitive, especially when obvious, doesn't mean true. It's like common sense, which is basically the go-to of your lot. It's not common, and it's rarely sense, and it doesn't even mean what you think it means. Things that seem obvious are often not that at all, when the actual explanation is something that goes beyond simply looking at it. You know, like the shape of the Earth. And that's not to say that it can't be detected, but you have to do more than look at something and assume you understand it fully from one basic observation. You cannot land a fucking plane on a spinning wet ball. You can't. Wake up. But what if it was really, really, really big? And what if the water was divided by massive chunks of relative dryness? I mean, even by your own misunderstandings of how this shit works, as long as you aimed for the right place with the right angle, there's no reason that it wouldn't work, really. Especially with your complete misunderstanding of physics, if that's how the world worked, I don't think it would even matter that there was a sudden change in acceleration or deceleration of the aircraft. Because you don't seem to think it matters on vehicles, so why would it matter on a planet? It's impossible! You cannot predict the weather! Wait, what? That was a sudden switch, and is that what this was about? They made, according to you, one error in the weather forecast, and suddenly... Nope, all those times that they were right, they don't count. Dude, if you get something right nine times out of ten, you are really fucking good at predicting it. And they predict the weather all the time. You can see proof of it basically every freaking day. And it may not be perfect, but I am damn sure it's more accurate than your chump ass waking up every day and saying, Oh, it's gonna rain. Yeah, you know what? I think I'll go with the fucking experts. From anywhere on a spinning wet ball. It's impossible. 
You keep using that word. I don't think it means what you think it means. And I don't just mean inconceivable. I mean all the words you use. I think if someone presented Vision Vision with a dictionary, he would be blown away that all these words actually have meanings. And almost none of them are the things that he thought they were. Of course, he would then think it was faked in a conspiracy to trick him for some reason. But yeah. Especially five days, seven days, eight days in advance. You would need a degree. Uh, are we talking qualification or are we talking like an angle? Because neither of those make any sense to what the hell you just said there, buddy boy. The second one, because I have no idea what that could even mean. And the first, well, people who do do that tend to have exactly that. They are almost certainly more educated than you and your mates. That's for damn sure, so yeah. But even then, equipment invented by degree guys probably just needs training to use, and maybe a brain, so I can understand your hesitation. I mean, it's just ridiculous. They just don't get it. Well, I'm glad you finally calmed down. You scared my cat with your big boy voice. But yeah, we do. We really do get it. In fact, that's entirely the problem. We get it so much that we can see all your giant glaring flaws in your understanding. And then when we point them out to you, it's you who doesn't get it. You refuse to actually sit down and understand the criticism of your ideas and worldview. And the one thing that really kills it for anyone paying attention is the sheer inconsistency. How when you line up all the ridiculous things you said, they just don't work together. But when you line up the actual explanations and expectations of how, you know, reality works, all those things, all those explanations and observations line up because they are based on how the everything works. You might want to think about that. They don't get it. Okay, they don't see the obvious. The only obvious thing is that you don't have any intention of understanding anything beyond what you already believe to be true. And we see it. We just will never let you sit there getting high on your own farts, thinking you're better than everyone else whilst being literally dumber than a sack of particularly stupid hammers. Wait, before you go, I have something super important to tell you. It's life or death. It will change everything forever. Nope. Wait, it's gone. Oh well, probably wasn't important. But while I have you, don't forget to comment, subscribe and notify. And if you want more of my smexy voice, check out Mrs. Six channel Spoonstar Stories, where I narrate and voice all the videos. And she does the work. And if you want to support the channel, check out the merch store for cool t-shirts, or check out Patreon, memberships and PayPal to support directly. Finally, follow me on the medias of social to get completely pointless guff and to keep up on the latest releases. Oh, I just remembered what I was going to tell you. Whatever you do, don't touch the-